Okay, thank you very much. Uh, um, my name is Giacomo Zanello and I'm based at the University of Oxford at the moment. What I'm going to present today is an uh, initial uh, research, uh, which is part of a large uh, research looking at the diffusion of innovation in low-income countries. The research is funded by ECRC, which is the Research Council of UK, and uh, DFID, which is the Department of International Development in UK. Uh, the overall uh, objective of uh, uh, the research is looking at uh, how innovation uh, is diffused uh, in uh, low-income countries, uh, which kind of innovation uh, we can find in low-income countries as well. And as we see, uh, we will see uh, innovation there is a, something slightly different to what we might think about innovation in Europe or in the, uh, the US. And this is really what I will try to argue in my short presentation, which basically is, uh, yes, we don't find the ground, uh, groundbreaking innovation in, uh, in low-income countries, but we find uh, many different kind of innovation, which might, might be new to the firm or new to, to the uh, country itself. Um, I'm going to present uh, some very preliminary results from a, a qualitative research which we uh, undertaken in, uh, uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, we uh, interview managers and workers in different firms uh, and we really try to capture uh, the kind of innovation they, they, uh, they have there. Uh, just, I, I'm going to start with very simple, very simple information just to contextualize uh, uh, the study. We know that the innovation is very critical for the growth of an economy. This is not, uh, is not uh, a, a, a new concept that we see, for example, the, uh, the example of uh, something like Germany and France uh, after the second uh, industrial revolution or Japan after the uh, Second World War, which was able to catch up with leading in the uh, technological, in the market and pushing the technological frontier. However, we also saw that uh, most of the innovation are concentrated in a few countries. Uh, what, uh, what usually we, uh, we capture for innovation is patents. We see the patents that are registered in different countries and we see, okay, those countries are innovative. And we see the, the latest data a couple of years ago, most of the patents are registered in North America and Asia. Asia is mainly China and Europe. And if we see low-income countries, like might be Africa or Latin America, we find really very little, very little evidence of this. Uh, therefore, the diffusion of knowledge from uh, uh, technological uh, advanced countries uh, to low-income countries might uh, rely on uh, enough human and financial resources in uh, hosting countries, but also capability and capaci capacity in firm and industries to make sense of new technology. Uh, I think uh, uh, patents is very good when we are talking about uh, industrialized uh, countries. However, we might, have a, we, uh, we might give a more broader definition of uh, what innovation is. And uh, uh, in the past uh, 10 years, there was a debate of uh, how really we can capture innovation. Uh, is the patent good enough or not? And uh, uh, from there, there are uh, uh, a new definition of what, what innovation is which uh, I'm going to read from the Oslo Manual, which is uh, uh, from uh, OECD. Uh, Adoption of new product and, or process uh, or new organizational and marketing practices. Where new means new to the world or new to the country or to the firm. And uh, we added a, a contribution one uh, from uh, Shun Peter, new business model and new sources of supply. Uh, if we see innovation from this different uh, perspective, we, uh, I think we could uh, highlight uh, two important differences with, uh, 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 within the definition itself. The first is that innovation is a very broad meaning which uh, uh, span a different, uh, different uh, field. We see new product or process and uh, new organization and marketing practices. And also, what is very important is that when, when we talk about new, we talk uh, new, not new to the uh, world, 
but it might be also new to the country or new to the firm itself. And the impact that this innovation uh, have on the, uh, on the firm is, uh, is important in, its, in itself. So this will be really our, uh, our uh, definition for innovation, which we will keep throughout, uh, throughout the, uh, the study. Uh, then which, which, uh, what, what, what really we want to see? We want to see which kind of innovation is found in low-income countries and how innovation is diffused to and spread within, country, uh, within low-income countries. Some innovation might be born, uh, might born uh, uh, in the country, but most, often, most of the time we found the innovation that is uh, from uh, outside a country or from a firm within the, within the country. Uh, more specifically, we focus on Ghana. Uh, why Ghana? Ghana because it got uh, uh, institution and educational level which might be uh, a fertile soil for, for innovation. And we, we have three different, uh, uh, three different questions which I will try briefly to, to address. Which is the, the first one is, which is the current state of innovation in Ghanaian firms? Are they innovative? What, in which kind of field they are innovating? And which are the motivation of innovation? The second is, uh, uh, which are the channel of innovation diffusion within uh, the country itself, but also from uh, uh, outside, outside Ghana, which uh, we saw that are very important uh, uh, channel of innovation. Uh, when I'm talking outside Ghana, it's not necessary from, for example, Europe or North America, but also South-South collaboration. Uh, there are new evidence, there is new evidence that South-South uh, collaboration might be more effective because the needs are similar for uh, uh, host, country, host country. And finally, we, 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 we look at the firm perception of the current innovation policies in Ghana. Uh, Ghana uh, addresses an industrial policies uh, in 2010 in which innovation uh, got a large, a large part of it. So we, we were interested to have a kind of perception from uh, workers and the managers on uh, how effective policies uh, are. Uh, very quickly, just a few, a few points on, on, on a few evidence from the literature. The first is that Innovation studies in low-income countries uh, is a very new field of research. Uh, innovation studies are, uh, quite, uh, have quite a long history in uh, uh, developed countries from Europe to, uh, to North America. But if we look at low-income countries, we find really very little uh, evidence. Uh, the second point I want, I want to make is that uh, uh, Innovation in low-income countries need to face a uh, lot of constraints, typically of uh, uh, low-income countries. Uh, most specifically, uh, um, the, industrial sector are the industrial sector are much uh, uh, less diversified. Often is uh, mainly agriculture and extractive uh, industry. Uh, the level of specialization is lower as well compared to industrialized countries. And uh, something important and something which we focus uh, uh, our attention is on the informal sector. Uh, half of the establishment in Ghana are informal, meaning uh, they uh, have a very different way of running business compared to formal, formal establishment, and uh, I will come back on this uh, later. And uh, uh, finally, the large share of FDI, which uh, of course is uh, important in the, in the context of uh, innovation. Uh, the, last, uh, the last point I would like to make uh, in terms of evidence from the literature is uh, the recogni recognition of uh, people living at the base of the pyramid as innovator and new potential customer. Uh, people under the poverty line uh, in, the past, uh, in the past decade have been uh, recognized as a not only as a potential uh, innovator, but to, uh, not as a potential customer, but also as an innovator. Often they are ingenuity and uh, they, they can face a strong constraint in the environment in which, uh, in which they live. And, uh, and it's something that uh, we, try to, uh, we try to look at. Uh, very quickly before going to the result, what, uh, what we have done, 
uh, this is, uh, is very much some preliminary, preliminary result uh, and uh, uh, which help us to contextualize the uh, world of innovation uh, in, uh, in, in Ghana. We use, we use a qualitative approach, a case study, and we uh, sample uh, firms that we knew they were innovative. Uh, in Ghana, two years ago, NEPAD uh, ran an innovation survey, so we could have access to the data, and uh, um, we, could, uh, we could pick uh, the, innovator, uh, the innovator firms. Uh, simply because, really, our purpose is to look at what drives innovation at, in, this, in this specific, uh, what I'm going to present today. We selected three industries, textile, which is uh, uh, very important and very labor intensive in, uh, in a country like, uh, uh, like Ghana, food sector, because uh, it's very connected with the agricultural world, and finally the firms working in the construction business. Uh, like many uh, African capital, there is a growing uh, uh, construction business, construction uh, industry in, uh, uh, in Ghana. And uh, um, what uh, the, the, the rationale of choosing uh, firms working in the construction business is because we were interested to see if uh, working with uh, foreign uh, firms, which are mainly firms that are working at the moment in, uh, in the construction industry in Ghana, for example, Chinese firms, uh, uh, can have some spillover to local firms. Uh, we choose uh, two sectors. We don't focus only on the formal sector, but also on the informal sector. Uh, just to give an example of formal and informal sector and which kind of uh, the difference uh, are, uh, on the top we see some textile, uh, two textile uh, uh, firms. The one on the left is formal. We see that the, the labor is very uh, organized. And uh, on the right uh, we see an informal sector. Informal sector of workers are paid uh, if they work. Uh, Sometimes uh, it's very often uh, uh, electricity power is not there, so they don't go to work and they don't, don't get paid. Um, and on the bottom we find the uh, food processing sector. Uh, we see that the technology is, 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 very, much, uh, is very much different. And, uh, and, and really what, what we, we, we try to do is to uh, try to compare different sectors, but also compare the difference between formal and informal sector. Uh, the overall idea really is to have a, a better understanding of innovation as an overall in the, in the uh, private sector. Uh, we sampled 10 firms, uh, four for textile and food sector, two of which were formal and informal, and two for uh, the construction uh, business. Uh, and we uh, ran 32 in-depth interviews. Uh, we interview managers, and we interview also workers. We wanted to understand whether workers are a source of innovation. Uh, there is quite a lot of literature uh, in innovation studies looking uh, at uh, uh, firms in Europe and in the US uh, in which they highlight how some of the innovation come from, from workers. And we were interested to see whether uh, this was something that we could find in a low-income country uh, setting. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go directly to, to, to the result. The first, uh, we are looking at the nature of innovation. And as I, I, as I mentioned uh, on, my first, on my first slide, we did find uh, act, uh, innovation activities in, uh, in a broad sense, which they span from uh, uh, production process to new product. But also we found a new uh, innovation in management and marketing practices. Uh, most of the innovation we found were incremental. And, uh, however, we found a few examples of uh, uh, innovation which uh, are believed to be new to the world. Uh, a very informal sector, uh, informal uh, food processing uh, firm which a few, with a few uh, employees, uh, he started doing a local uh, sauce 
instead of using pepper, they put uh, mushroom. And actually, no one ever done it before. So we find new, new, new evidence of a uh, product that really no one have done it before. Uh, a construction firm business is doing a device which was used to be done in, uh, uh, by, in wood, in plastic. And uh, um, this as well, they are not aware of anyone else doing something similar. And uh, um, one point about innovation, uh, uh, the nature of innovation, which I think is important to, to highlight, is that we find innovation in different industry and in different sector. It's not uh, specific uh, neither by uh, uh, industry and sector. Um, often, uh, however, we had the uh, evidence that uh, innovation is driven by, by the people more than by institution. So are really people with uh, uh, managers, most of the time, with a characteristic that uh, they make them uh, to uh, um, overcome constraint, which are typical of low-income countries. Constraint in terms of uh, um, access to labor and access to finance, finance, uh, financial support. Uh, quickly, I will go through which kind of uh, product innovation we, we found and which kind of process uh, uh, um, manager and organizational uh, innovation. Uh, the first is why firms decide to innovate first. Uh, we, we find a very range of motivation why firms uh, decide to innovate. Uh, the most obvious is to increase market opportunities. I decide to produce something new so I can enter a new market which uh, I might think uh, I, I, can have, uh, I can have some space. Some, uh, they want to maximize the profit meaning they, they decide to uh, include new product where the margin is, uh, is higher. Others decide to optimize the production. For example, a food processing firm, which was used to do a, a palm soup, uh, decide to, work, to get into the um, peanuts sector because when palm, uh, palm is not in season, peanuts is in season, so they can keep uh, the uh, production throughout, uh, throughout the year. Others, they want to reduce waste. We, 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 we spend some time with a very small informal food processing uh, uh, mushroom uh, grower. And uh, she was used to sell uh, fresh mushroom to, to the market. And uh, of course, uh, mushrooms are very perishable uh, uh, food. So she was able to uh, have a dryer for mushroom, and now she sells uh, uh, dry mushroom as well. So reducing waste is a way, uh, is a motivation for, for innovation. And also we find some example of uh, um, innovation from demand side. In a construction firm, they receive a large order from Af uh, African foreign uh, um, government to produce a specific kind of pipe and, uh, and uh, they were able to, 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 to get into the market. Uh, then we found that most of the firm introduced new machinery to increase uh, uh, efficiency and, uh, and quality. Uh, in terms of non-technological innovation in marketing and management practice, uh, in marketing we find innovation from uh, new packaging. They always try to have uh, packaging that stand up uh, at the, in the shelf. Uh, they communicate with customers. For example, a very small informal food processing uh, uh, firm start putting a mobile phone number in the label, and people are calling them uh, if they like or they don't like uh, the product. And, uh, and also they try to add services to the product. For example, a textile, uh, uh, a small uh, formal textile uh, uh, firm uh, which is working in the um, security um, uh, clothes, for, clothes for security uh, in, uh, teach, uh, uh, is used to teach the, uh, the new customer 
how to take measurement. So they are sure that the, the, the measurement they get are, are correct. Uh, in terms of management practice, we, find, uh, uh, we found that different uh, uh, um, firms, we found different firms that are uh, uh, doing cross-training. Uh, they train labor to work in different parts of the value chain, the, the, the process uh, chain, the chain of uh, process chain. And uh, uh, in a way that if uh, one worker is uh, not able to come to work, they can uh, replace uh, uh, in efficient, inefficient way. Uh, just uh, very quickly going through the diffusion of innovation, uh, how firms get to know new things, what, what, what can, uh, can, how they can innovate. Uh, first, I will, I will talk about uh, uh, diffusion of innovation within Ghana. And we find that uh, uh, most of the informal uh, uh, firms, uh, they get to innovate uh, through training courses. They have some uh, uh, government training courses which teach them a new technique and new technologies. Uh, we find that cluster is an important, uh, important source of uh, uh, innovation as well. So, so, um, sure. sure. Uh, yeah, we run out of time. Ah, okay, okay. So, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, very quickly, uh, something that we were also interested in was collaboration with local universities, and only we found that only in more formal, more formal uh, establishment. Very quickly about innovation diffusion from outside Ghana, uh, we find the uh, internet a very uh, a large source of uh, inf information from uh, uh, for different. Uh, uh, firms that we, we interview. Uh, just to conclude, uh, uh, really some preliminary conclusion about uh, what, uh, what we have done. Uh, yes, we found, uh, we found innovation in different, uh, different uh, fields. However, most of them is incremental and not groundbreaking. Uh, innovation uh, seems to be more uh, uh, driven by people people that have characteristics to overcome constraints typical of low-income <coughs> countries, more than uh, uh, institutions. And finally, we, we, we capture some space for policy implementation, which we might, we might, discuss, uh, we might discuss later. <laughs>